At the recent Endocrine Society meeting, an update to the STEP trial was presented. Now, for those of you who don't remember what the STEP trial was, it is basically four different trials looking at the benefits of semaglutide for weight loss, both in people with diabetes and without diabetes. The trial included people who were 18 or older with a BMI greater than or equal to 30 if they didn't have a weight-related pre-existing condition or greater than or equal to 27 if they did. Step one, which was recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine, looked at a dose of 2.4 milligrams of semaglutide and a lifestyle intervention in patients with obesity who didn't have diabetes. And frankly, many of my patients saw this as a headline and many of my patients wanted to go on this immediately and they didn't realize they'd already been on semaglutide just at the lower one milligram dose that is currently FDA approved for the treatment of type two diabetes. Step two is for semaglutide and lifestyle in individuals with type two diabetes and obesity. And again, this is at that higher dose of 2.4 milligrams. Step three is 2.4 milligrams of semaglutide in conjunction with intensive behavioral therapy in adults with obesity. And step four is basically looking at the importance, the value of continued semaglutide usage. The published findings from step one showed that 2.4 milligrams of semaglutide were associated with a weight loss of 14.9% from a baseline of 232 pounds compared to 2.4% in the placebo group. And this is after 68 weeks. And one of the impressive things about their data is that you really did see weight loss continue to persist at least to a year, and then it obviously did not go back up. So this was a gradual slow weight loss over time. And 86% of the participants on the semaglutide group reached a weight loss of 5% or more compared with 32% in placebo. Now, if you wanna look at it in terms of absolute numbers, the absolute weight loss was 15.3 kilograms, which is almost 34 pounds in these adults without diabetes compared to 2.6 kilograms in the placebo group. Now, in terms of side effects, as we know, the most common side effects to GLP-1 receptor agonists are gastrointestinal, and 4.5% of the participants discontinued due to the GI side effects compared to 0.8% in the placebo group. So at the Endocrine Society, there were two abstracts presented. One was looking at changes in body composition. So they found that there was a 3.5% reduction in total fat mass and a 2% reduction in visceral fat, which is great. We obviously want people to lose visceral fat, but their total lean body mass decreased by 10%. So that's a fairly large fall in lean body mass. Now this finding was mitigated by the fact that the ratio of lean body mass to fat mass improved slightly. But it really brings home the point, at least to me, that we need patients to really work on the physical activity portion of lifestyle change as they're actually losing weight. So I want to make sure that people are aware that just because they're taking a medication for weight loss doesn't mean they don't have to do other things like exercise in order to become healthier. The second abstract looked at the baseline characteristics and tried to relate those to basically success at weight loss. And pretty consistently across all groups, there was a nice reduction in weight, but it did stand out that the percent weight loss was greater in female participants. And this makes me smile slightly because in many of our weight loss interventions, we've seen that they work better in men than in women, but in this trial or these trials, it was better in the women and that those who had a lower body weight at baseline lost more weight than those had, who had a higher weight. So clearly everybody got weight loss, but actually if you were a bit leaner, and remember all of these individuals were obese, you were more likely to lose a bit more weight and frankly get closer 
to one's target weight. So those are the updates for the STEP study, and we're going to hear a lot more to come in the next year or so, and then obviously there needs to be FDA approval for the use of semaglutide for weight loss, and finally, of course, reimbursement, so we can provide it to our patients. Thank you.